it tells us that the graph is given A and B are the turning points, determine the coordinates of A and B. So this is a nice, easy question. Why is this an easy question? Because we know that to find a turning point, which is these points over here and this point over here, we know that that is where the gradient of the graph is equal to zero. And we should know that if you want to find the turning point of a cubic graph, you must take the first derivative and then you make that equal to zero. Because the, yeah, I don't want to say too much. Um, so we take the, so we, so we write down the original equation. Then we take the first derivative. I've had some students who call it the first derogative and some, <laughs> some really interesting things, but it's the first derivative and we take the first, um, yeah, so we take the first derivative and that's going to give us 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. Now, can you guys remember that the first derivative is a, it's just another name for gradient. So look at this point and look at this point. What is the gradient? The gradient is zero. So we say zero. And we then say 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. Now, you can solve this however you like. Uh, you could try factorize. You can use the quadratic formula. I think I'm going to try factorize. It looks like it will work. I'm going to divide everything by c plus x minus 12. Two. And so what we do now is we can still factorize this one. This one will still factorize nicely as x plus 2 and x minus 1. And so therefore, x must be negative 2 or x must be equal to 1. And so this x value is 1. And then this x value is negative 2. Okay. But now we don't know what the y value is. Now, what a lot of students do in order to find the y value, they, they, they plug it back into this equation. But then guess what you are going to get? You're just going to keep getting a y value of zero. And that's not what you want to do. Remember, you are looking for the y value. This is not a y value. That is a gradient value. So if you want to find a y value, you must come back to the original equation and plug it into that one. Okay. And so if we go plug in um, minus two, so if we plug in minus two, remember to always do it in brackets. Otherwise, you won't get the correct answer. Well, sometimes you will, but that's just luck. So I'm just going to quickly type that all in. Okay. And this y value should be 20. And then I'm going to quickly plug in uh, the y value of one, and that's minus seven. Um, for which values of x will the graph be concave up? Okay, what we should know is that um, I'm going to give you guys a quick little summary. So look at the graph over here. What is the graph doing over there? Is it happy or is it sad? Well, that's a sad face if you ask me. Like if I put some eyes over here, you can sort of see this person is really sad. Okay, it's a terrible drawing, Kevin. Now, if you look at this side, this person is happy. See, smiling. You can sort of see the smiley face over there. Right. So did you know that the happy face is when the graph looks like this? And that is called concave up. And that is when the second derivative is bigger then zero. Okay, now some students struggle with these signs, so I'm going to say bigger than zero. Then you get the sad face area, so that's where the graph looks like a sad face. That's called concave down, and that is where the second derivative is smaller than zero, smaller than zero. So here they're telling us for which values of x will the graph be concave up? So where is the graph concave up? Well, that's the smiley face. So it's going to be all of, um, it's going to be this entire area over here. 
smiley face. Can you see it? That's where the graph is smiling. So how do we find that? Well, we take the second derivative. So let's quickly write out the original equation. So the original equation is 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x. I'm going to switch my video off quickly because we're about to write down there. I'll be back. And then the first derivative Um, we already looked at is 6x squared plus 6x. Oh, by the way, I know some of you are asking me. The question you may be thinking in your head is, um, Kevin, when we were solving the first derivative, we divided everything by six. Can we use that when we go to the second derivative or must we use this original one? Well, if you're thinking that, that's a good question. It's a very, it's a, it's a question I get a lot. You have to use the original. You can't use the, um, although it doesn't really make much of a difference, but I just like to advise learners to um, use, the, um, use the original. Okay, otherwise things can get a bit confusing. So just always come back to the original. And then if we take the second derivative, that's just going to give us 12x plus 6. Okay, 12x plus 6. Now, we would like to know where is the second derivative concave up? So that means we must do this. So we want to know where the second derivative is bigger than zero. So we want this to be bigger than zero. And now we solve. So we take the 12x and the 6 goes over. So it becomes a negative 6. Now, be careful. A lot of students, they always say, um, Kevin, I'm going to switch the sign because I'm dividing with a negative. Guys, you are not dividing with a negative right now. We are dividing with the number 12. That negative 6 has nothing to do with it. Okay, so we're not going to switch the sign over there at all. And so we're going to have 12x bigger than minus 6. And so if you had to divide that by 12, you're going to get negative a half. So it means that this graph will be concave up when x is bigger than negative a half. So that means that the x value of negative a half is probably over here. And all the x values that are bigger than that will be all of these x values. And that is where the graph is concave up. Okay. Determine the equation of the tangent. Determine the equation of the tangent at point C. Okay, so what is a tangent? Well, we know that a tangent is a line that is going to touch this. Uh, it's going to touch the graph over here at that single point. Okay, so a tangent would look something like uh, this, for example. Let me see if I can get this right first time. Oh, beautiful. A tangent is something like that, okay? So um, tangents are very easy to find, to be honest. It's very easy marks. Uh, we know that a tangent is a straight line, so it's y equals to mx plus c. Now, remember the following important thing. A tangent, well, let's see, let's do this. The gradient of a tangent is the same as the gradient of the graph. The gradient of the tangent is the same as the gradient of the graph at the point of contact. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to work out what is the gradient of the cubic graph over there. Now, how do we find the gradient of a cubic graph? we use the first derivative because I said earlier that the first derivative is another name for gradient. So once again, we're going to go find the first derivative. Once again, we can go find the first derivative, which we said earlier was 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. Are we going to make that equal to zero? No. The only reason we made it equal to zero earlier was because we were looking for the turning point. And at the turning point, the gradient is zero. A lot of learners, they just want to put zero over here. But you've got to ask yourself, why? Well, when do I put a zero there? Okay, so we don't know what the gradient is at this point. 
but we do know that the x value is two. So I can substitute an x value of two wherever I see x. And if I had to go work that out, we get 24. What does that mean? It means that the gradient is equal to 24 over here. The gradient is 24. Now remember that the gradient of the graph is the same as the gradient of the tangent. So the tangent gradient is also going to be 24. There we go. Now to find the C value, you can plug in any point that is on the tangent, but that point is this point over here. So we can plug in the four and the two. So the four is a Y value and the two is an X value. And now we just go solve for C and I think we should get negative 44. So C is equal to negative 44. Let me write that nicely for us. And so the final answer for this equation is going to be Y equals to 24X minus 44.